All right, let's let's start there because um, it, it seems like people want to second guess Carlos Mendoza. Uh, I think he got as much as he could out of Manaya, and then out of the next two relievers as well. And you know, just sitting around AJ Hinch the last two days, these things are planned. This is what this guy is going to face. This is who this guy is going to face in big moments. They did not want um, a guy with a fastball to face Churio. They just didn't. That that's not that's not the plan. The plan was to have Phil Maton come in and then, you know, a home run and that ties it and, and you know, two batters later another home run and that gives them a 5-3 lead and that brings us to today, but I I don't think I don't know if you you agree with this, Don. I don't think you bring in Diaz there in the 8th inning because he could only pitch oh. one inning. They've overused him because they had to. And who would you have to pitch the ninth? I don't think Diaz could have done now, it. Now, there's a ton of different takes, and I can't tell who um, had a first take, second take, third take on it. Obviously, every time a team loses, there's got to be a hot take of how the manager screwed it up or, or this happened. Hey, you lose games. It's going to happen. The Brewers, Brewers are paid to play, too. They're a good baseball team. And the Mets didn't lose this game with the arms. They lost this game with nine runners left on base, including runners in scoring position where they could have added to that 3-1 lead and didn't do it. They they had an inning in which Marte steals second base. They get the review. He's safe. And they get three cracks to get him in, didn't get him in. Had the bases loaded, two outs, couldn't get a big hit where they could have maybe blown the Brewers out made it a moot point. So I mean, that, that, to me, is the take from, from yesterday's game. But but here they are in not necessarily any order. Go a second inning with Stanek. Who want who would want that? I mean he's, he's he's okay. He's not great. He did only throw nine pitches, and he's a one inning guy. But he's though. a one inning guy, and, and believe me, you'd have your heart in your throat if he came out for the eighth inning. All right, he did his job. He got the outs in the seventh inning. Maton was brought here for this moment. When they made the deal, all anybody wanted to talk about was his 1.99 earn run average in the postseason. Hey, this guy's a great pickup, especially if you make the postseason. Well, then that's why you have him. He's your eighth inning guy. So Stanek coming in for a second inning, even if it, it we don't know if it would have worked, I don't know if that's the play. Maton's the play because that's he's your eighth inning guy. Now he didn't he was wasn't great down the stretch, wasn't great on Monday in the first game of the doubleheader, but. It's the postseason. He's got experience. That's his job. The other thing is, and I thought about it too, not that I would have done it, but I was curious. Will he come out with Diaz for a six-out save? And I was glad he didn't in, in this sense. He had thrown 66, pre, uh, 66 pitches combined on Sunday and Monday. Got the day off. Um, but if you if he fails then you don't have him possibly for the elimination game here. And I'm not saying you can play because you know you got another game, but you don't have to exert yourself. Tonight, 3-2, eighth inning, Diaz is going to get six outs because you're facing elimination. But it's not that crazy, and it's not even an analytic move. Maton is your eighth inning guy. He didn't get the job done. So uh, I can't I can't kill Carlos Mendoza for doing what they're supposed to do and it not working. So is he supposed to think outside the box, Michael, because he's been such a great manager? that that And if it had worked out that he's the king? Or is there anything wrong with just doing the, the, the job that you're supposed to do? Bring in my eighth inning guy to protect the 3-2 lead. I, I think that was the only thing to do. I mean, the only other option. I don't think you bring in Diaz in the eighth. I just don't think he's physically able to do it right now. Well, now you could, bring him in to, you, you could bring him in to pitch the eighth. But then he can't pitch well, tonight. See, He's thrown 40 pitches on Monday. See, that's another thing I saw on social media. Well, you know, you got to survive in advance. So you got to pitch him in the. What, what, who does that? <laughs> right? Like, if he's not available for two innings, why would you then have him in the eighth inning? And then who's pitching the ninth? Well, how would that have been any, any better? Then Maton pitches the ninth inning, he gets shelled. Or Diaz then has to exert himself to pitch a second inning and then gets hit. Yo, know, it didn't sound like he had six outs in him, Michael. So it was the right move not to bring in Diaz. And Maton's your guy. And you brought him in here because he was great in the postseason in his career. He just wasn't last night. It happens, all right? It, you're going to lose games. Michael, I don't know what your take was because you were probably in transit. But I I'm was sure. watching, though. But you're, so, right, so you know, as you're watching them fail time after time after time to get those insurance runs, you knew you were in trouble. 
They, 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 yeah, they didn't score for seven innings, huh? And and the, the the bullpen did such a terrific job in game one that you know that you just knew it was going to come back to haunt you. The Brewers are a good offensive team, and then once they made it three two, yeah, you could have hang hung on, but in all likelihood you were you were just I was just hoping. All right, once once they tied the game, you know, just try to get to extra innings, uh, or maybe just find some way to be able to, to score in the ninth inning. Th- even though the Mets got to their bullpen in game one, this is a terrific bullpen that the Brewers have. So it's not crazy that he got shut down. But you get a runner at second with nobody out, Michael. At 3-1, you got to make that game 4-1. Uh, you get, you got to find a way to be able to tack on. They didn't tack on, and it burned them. Now, one other thing about, you know, Stanek. Stanek throws hard. Um, but Churio is a, a, a dead fastball hitter. So the move to Maytom was the move to make. Now, if you want to, you know, second guess, I think a legitimate second guess, Don, is after you know another runner gets on, maybe you go to the bullpen then. Maybe you ask Diaz to get the final out then. But then you're bringing Diaz into a tie game, which probably necessitates him pitching in the ninth inning as well. And then you're getting in a little hairy situation there. So they need him today. You don't play yesterday preparing for today, but you have to keep it in the back of your mind as well. I don't think that game was lost by Mendoza. It was lost by Maton. And every manager will tell you, you can make the absolute right move. Absolute right move. And it could backfire because the player did not execute. Maton is an excellent postseason pitcher, as Don just said, and he didn't execute. He said that he doesn't regret the pitch. He just regrets the location. It happened. So now you've got a winner-take-all, and the Mets are the first team in baseball history to play five games in four days, including the postseason. Let's see how they do. It's, you hope that the doubleheader doesn't catch up with them. No matter what, losing yesterday hurts, obviously, and and the way and the fashion which it happened in was not what you want. But, guys, it's not like what – I would be much more concerned if we saw, like, a really – a top to bottom poor performance from them yesterday. I, I still feel good about the Mets going into the game tonight. They, 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 they didn't give you the feeling, Don, that like the, you know the Orioles were giving you into game two. This isn't a team that's lost everything because they lost a game. And let's not forget, this is a team that just bounced back. Well, not just bounced back in a game, Don, but bounced back after a bad series before the doubleheader. Well, they've bounced back all year long. I mean, that's been their mantra really since the beginning of June. The ability to get off the mat. And you can go back when things were not sealed up at all that four game series against Philly they got smacked around on that Friday lost 12 to 2 and they get off the mat and win on Saturday and Sunday in spectacular fashion the brewers the brewers series they lose those first two games they come back and they win on Sunday uh, so you're playing with fire you're facing elimination there's no tomorrow all the clichés you want to throw out here but if you don't trust this team then you're never going to trust them because they've shown you this year. Forget about the history and typical Mets and all that. In the moment, this team has shown the ability to get off the mat. I'm not thrilled about facing elimination. We did the show yesterday, Michael, and there was just a feel. I was guilty of it, too, where you start your mind begins to wander about Philadelphia and what kind of run they can make because it was just so impressive the way they bounced back after the slow start in game one. But the Brewers were heard from, and, and now now you got to answer. And, and Quintana's been good for this team down the stretch. And and just and, and hopefully that you know Alonzo gets going. I mean his bat's been uh, See, certainly that, that, slow. That's what I wanted to talk about, Don. I'm not a guy who jumps on guys. He, he hasn't had a great year. Hmm. He hasn't had big games. Uh, and it, this is a time for him to step up because the, if he does great in a game like this, yesterday he tripped over the bat. No fault of his own, but that's another run for the Mets if he doesn't trip over the bat because he beats out the double play and then a run scores. So that was a big play in the game. But he's got to do more than dunk singles. He He's become yeah. essentially Mark Grace. He's a home run hitter. And it, the last home run he hit, Don, was, uh, I think, September 19th. And it was against a big name, Clemens. But it was not Roger. It was his son pitching as a position player. So he's got to – if he wants to really put pressure on the Mets to bring him back, you got to have a big game today to make fa- Mets fans remember well. – why they love you, but if you just don't, don't do anything today, that's, I don't think there's going to be that huge outcry for them to re-sign no, him. You're and I right. know that's you know the 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 you know urgency of the moment, but this is a big moment right well, now, and Pete has not done much to get this team to this position. And that's scary because Michael, compared to his back of the baseball card, oh yeah, this has not been a great year for him. And if it's not been a great year for him because of the fact it's the walk year for his contract and he succumbed to the pressure, well, then you know what? 
how does that bode well for tonight? I mean, if he's going to put it all in for tonight to save his future as a Met and, and to and to try to be able to earn some dollars during the offseason, well, if it affected him during the course of the year, then how's it going to affect him tonight? He's got enough on his plate with the Mets facing elimination here. Uh, is he going to be able to handle now going to the plate, knowing it could be his last game as a Met, and how he performs might solidify that? And how he performs might end up deciding how much money he's going to make in free agency. It seems crazy that it would come down to one game. But you know the narrative would change completely. Because not only would a big game help the Mets win, it would open the door for maybe having a big series against Philly. And maybe carrying them to the league championship series. And if he's able to do that, Michael, they'll forget about what happened in the regular season. uh, Obviously, his agent is going to be, and Scott Boris knows what he's doing, will focus on these moments as a reason why he should get paid. He just has to produce in this moment, so it just adds another piece of lumber of pressure on the guy's shoulders tonight. He has not homered in 49 consecutive plate appearances. He's 5 for 38 without an extra base hit since September 19th. So this is kind of put up or shut up time. And I don't look at his, his year as such a terrible year. It's not his no. typical year, but he had 88 runs bad, and he hit 240. It's not terrible. He hit, you know, I think he had 33, 34 home runs. So, I mean, that's not the that's not vintage prime Pete Alonso, but he didn't just completely uh, wet the bed. He did okay. He just didn't have a great year. But I'm just saying that in terms of having the fans on your side, to put that extra push behind Steve Cohen and David Stearns, that we love this guy, if he fails today and the Mets lose today, is that love going to be as strong where the Mets are going to have an outcry I don't think if so. they don't bring back well, Pete Alonso? I'm already sensing, Michael, in, in Metland that he has now become like the GOAT. Uh, now, listen, he had three walks in game one. He did have a hit yesterday, but, you know, tripping over the bat, not coming up big with runners saying, in scoring position. You're, you're saying GOAT, not greatest of all Go, time. I mean, no, I mean GOAT, meaning... The goat, like the reason that he's the he's the guy offensively that isn't getting the job done, which is unfair. Listen, nobody's going to kill Lindor. He doesn't have a hit in this series, but he's Lindor, and they wouldn't be here without him. You know, there's a lot of other guys People, that haven't done well. Martinez has been completely lost, and he was 0 for three uh, last night. You know, so there's a lot of guys. Taylor left some runners on base despite having a hit. Uh, um, Alvarez has one hit so far in this series, but. It's Pete, and that's who's going to be the one that's going to get the slings and the arrows if they lose tonight, and he goes 0-4 for 4 with three strikeouts. I feel like Lindor needs to do something today, though. I feel like there'll be at least some little bit of chatter. I mean, obviously, the season's been amazing. But, Don, you don't think there'll be any conversation if he does nothing in the three-game series? I, I, listen, they're not here without without him. Uh, he's He had a couple of walks last night. He's got a sacrifice fly. He has been stellar in the field. He made some outstanding plays. Not all of them resulted in outs, but he did a great job of the glove last night. No, I, I think... Lindor, because of his season, and also the fact that his back can't be 100%, will right. get a pass. No, this will be on Pete. No, I don't think there's any question. Do you, Michael, that this will be on Pete? Oh, it's going to how the game plays out. I mean, if Pete comes up and they're down by one in the ninth inning, he has a bases loaded, strikes out, it's going to be on Pete. It could be a collective effort, too. But if Pete goes 0 for 4 and they lose, I mean, there will be some eyeballs on him. Now, he was asked uh, after yesterday's game, where are you at offensively? Here's Pete Alonso. Feel good, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm I'm taking pretty decent at bats. Um, yeah, feel I feel really consistent. Just need to need to keep swinging, and and uh, good things will happen. Keep swinging at good pitches, and good things will happen. It's October third. I mean, so you mean he's time for make to... something happen. Today. Time, yeah. It's time. It's time. But it's it's baseball's crazy, right? You know, if this is basketball or hockey, you get days off between games, and football, you get a whole week off. It has been just an absolute roller coaster ride since Monday. It's Thursday. We've seen this team, you know, be dead, come back to life. To now, you're fantasizing about Philadelphia. To now, all of a sudden, facing elimination and it be done. Think about that, man. If they lose tonight in a four day span, think of the roller coaster ride you've had with this team. Yeah, in four days. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna revisit a tired old refrain right now. Sure, but you know. I believe it's Boog and uh, Doug Glanville doing the game on ESPN. That is correct, sir. Right? And they're both excellent. Boog is one of the best in the game, and I've worked with Doug. He's terrific. But don't you think that it's only right that Met fans and Brewer fans get to hear their home team announcers on a secondary audio? Don't you think Met fans want to listen to Gary, Ron, and Keith do this game? Don't you think that Brewers want to listen to Brian Anderson do the game? 
No, I know for a fact that Astros fans only wanted to hear Michael K. Well, but I was even going to bring up that. You don't think that Tiger fans want to hear Jason <laughs> Benetti and but they didn't want to hear I, Todd I, Callis on the Astros side? Come I, on. But it just, I, I, it's I, so easy. I know, but I just find it funny that this comes up every year. It's the way they've been doing it for 50 years. And it's no, the it's same. not. No, it's not because they used to put – when we were growing up, Don, if you remember, in big games they would put a, a local announcer in with the national guy. I'm not even saying doing that. Just have secondary yeah, audio. Mike, Michael, when did they do that? In the late 70s? I mean, that's, yeah. That, that's, yeah, that's almost 50 years ago. Okay? Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, All right? 1974 was 50 years ago. This is the way it is. It's the way it is after the first round in hockey and basketball, too. I mean, the, it, this the, is, the easiest play would be, because this is so doable, they do this – with things like maybe the MLB app, I correct me if I'm wrong, but if not, they do it with other sports apps. The easy one would be, even if it's not the TV guys, Michael, because you guys don't do it, to listen to the local radio with the TV. Yeah, you can do that. That, that you can sync it up. But but no, no, no. And, but it should be done. Like it should be a, a button you push. And also in for local years, radio. In 50 years, Don, you know we haven't had the uh, the mastery of the secondary audio. I mean, it's so easy now to do it. And this way, ESPN. Uh, and you know, next next round, TBS and Fox, they still get the ratings because you're still watching their show. But the bottom line is, the people get to hear who they want to hear. They don't get to hear a national Almost broadcaster. Said, I, I would do it. I think it's a really good idea, but it doesn't seem like there's any appetite for it to get done. And it's been this way forever. I mean, most of our audience does not remember that time where they they'd allow you know Phil Rizzuto to pop into the booth during the World Series. It, it, it's this is kind of the way it's always been. And unfortunately, the reason I think they should do it is because baseball's a regional sport. I mean, right. you're catering to the national audience, and I don't know what the number was last night, Michael, but I would think, what would it be, 80% of your audience is probably either a Met or a Brewer fan? Uh, maybe, of course, maybe yeah. You know, because it's a local.